Hello, everybody, and welcome back. Uh, we are back here in Dark Table, although this time I am on Linux Mint. Um, don't worry, I'm not abandoning the Mac platform. I just uh, retired my Mac Pro, and I don't have my new MacBook Pro set up for recording yet, so um, uh, uh, Dark Table works fine on Linux and on Mac, so um, the settings you'll see here will work just fine on OS X. Um, but anyway, this machine's a lot faster anyway, so it should go smoothly. Smoothly. More smooth, perhaps? Anyway, so uh, you may have been outside and taken a picture of the supermoon, uh, full moon, uh, recently. This is uh, recorded on November 16th, 2016. Um, and uh, perhaps you got something that looks like this. Well, I'm going to show you how to use Darktable to get something that looks much more appealing with much more detail in it. Uh, you can see you can see the craters pretty well in here. Um, you know, the seas, a little bit of color. Um, I, got, I think I just took this handheld. Uh, yeah, probably. Uh, so it's probably not the sharpest thing on the face of the planet. I took it with a Nikon crop camera D7000 and a 300mm uh, lens. So it's not anything spectacular. Just run-of-the-mill equipment. I do use a telescope for more serious astrophotography. But um, for this sort of stuff, you know, quick shots of the moon, a little lens will work fine. Um, it is still kind of small in the frame, though. So the first thing I'm going to do... Just crop it in here. I like to use a square format on the moon and just kind of hang it in the center uh, like this. Not very original, but it looks good on Instagram and whatnot. Um, and, you know, there's not a lot of information. It's a very black sky. The, the full moon is very bright, so you're not going to see a whole heck of a lot of other stars and stuff. It's kind of overexposed if you check out the histogram here um, and right in there. So the first thing I'm going to do is pull that in a little bit. And you can see since I shot in RAW, that detail is preserved, and it's still there. Um, it still looks kind of flat, though. Um, you can try to add some contrast by coming here but in this slider, but that, this slider here is kind of mediocre. Um, the saturation is okay, but I'm not a huge fan of, of that either. Um, actually, for this type of shot, I like to use the tone mapping module. And when you first cut it on, it looks like garbage. Uh, no other way to put that. It looks terrible. But you can see all the detail that's popping in here. Um, so what you really need to do is bring down um, the, uh, the two sliders here. Um, these just kind of uh, adjust how hard that effect hits. So, um, you know, the more spatial extent, the, uh, the, the more normal the picture looks, I find. And the contrast compression, the more extreme the more you increase that, the more extreme the picture looks because it's trying to take all of those values. In fact, if I drag it around and you look at the histogram, it tries to take all of those, all of that detail. It tries to bring the blacks up and hold the highlights at the same time. As you can see, they're creeping in from the left there. So really, I don't want, it depends from shot to shot, but for these moon shots, I want to keep the blacks kind of black. Um, or really black because I want that night sky to be just midnight black. And... Um, this wasn't shot at midnight, but close enough. And the spatial extent, you know, we'll bring it up a little bit to get a little bit more realistic, maybe like, you know, two or three percent. But I find with the tone mapping module, a little bit goes a long way. And you can see already that just from uh, here, with the few adjustments we've made, just from cropping it to here, we've already got a lot more detail. This is already a lot better photo uh, than what we started with, but we can make it even better. Um, so let's first here, let's hit the lens correction. That'll take care of a little bit of uh, stuff. And this lens is in the uh, little bit of distortion in the database, so it brings it right in. Um, let's hit chromatic aberration because you are dealing with a very bright moon on a very dark background. Um, and let's also hit uh, the fringe module because that chromatic aberration doesn't really get all of it all the time. But you can see now that that's not the edge of the moon here is very... Um, uh, very clean looking now. I also find, and uh, I picked this up from Riley Brandt's channel, um, but I've uh, he's had pretty good results with this Amaze, changing the D-Mosaic here in this module, uh, changing that to a maze from PPG. Um, I have a pretty speedy machine. This is a, uh, not bragging, okay, maybe a little, but this is a Haswell E uh, with like 32 gigs of RAM and a big video card, so, you know, I really don't notice a difference between these two. If you are, um, if you are having problems with it, 
uh, with a maze slowing your machine down, you PPG might be the better way. But a maze, um, he pointed out in one of his videos that um, it really uh, credit where it's due. There, uh, it really kind of cuts down on the chromatic aberration, and I, I I agree. I definitely I definitely see that too. Um, so now might be happy with this. This is actually a pretty darn good shot. Just those few adjustments, we've gone from where we cropped it here all the way to there. I mean, it looks, you know, you've got detail in this crater here. This is a crater of Tycho. Um, see a little bit along Terminator. You can see the Maria pretty well. Um, you know, I would not be embarrassed to put that photo up somewhere, but we can also come in here and bring a little more contrast out. So we're going to adjust the curves here a little bit. Uh, never friends don't let friends leave the digital dark room with a flat uh, with a flat tone curve so I'm just gonna kind of bring in a little bit there uh, the moon's pretty monochromatic so I'm not really worried about uh, scaling the chroma manually that looks pretty good so just cutting that module on and off you can see we've kind of added a little bit more pop there um, next I like to really bring out the color the moon has color um, it's very faint, the human eye can't pick it up, it's hard to see. Uh, so the first thing I do, this is the one thing I really use this brightness and saturation module for. Them, for. Uh, I just drag that up, and we're starting to get a little color in it. But then to really pop it, uh, I also hit the color correction module, uh, which you can just put your mouse here and scroll up to get it to increase the, uh, don't, don't drag these. You can do some split toning with these if you drag these highlight and shadow uh, pieces off here, you can see that it kind of uh, adds a little bit of a tint, but if you just leave those in the center, it just affects the overall saturation. Or, uh, by scrolling up and down, you can see that slider moving. Or you can come down here and do the old-fashioned way and grab the slider. You know, no wrong way. You know, your way, whatever makes you happy. So we got a little bit of color there. Uh, there is a little bit. It's not just gray and boring. Very nice. Uh, we do have a little bit of noise. This was shot at ISO 200, uh, mainly color. I'm going to hit that with some uh, profile denoise here, uniform uh, HSV color. Um, and that will, I'm applying that mask uniformly, so over the whole image, and using the HSV color blend mode. And that gets rid of all your color noise with the wavelet setting. And I just use that strength. I leave that strength pretty high. I don't see it losing any detail. And that looks pretty darn good. Um, uh, next, I'm going to hit the equalizer module here in the correction group, and really make this really make this puppy shine. So we're going to bring up the fine details here, and you can really see things are starting to look good. You, you're really starting to see that kind of rough texture come through. The moon is starting to look almost three dimensional there. Uh, I love me some equalizer module. Um, to be frank, uh, it is this is probably the best module and interface for wavelet decomposition I've ever seen. Um, I'm also going to come in here and bring up the chroma, which is the color. So luma is like your contrast. This is going to be like um, uh, kind of analogous to what you can do with the clarity slider in Lightroom, if you're familiar with it. You can also I like to come in here and bring up the bottom, so on the bottom side of this module, and um, there are other YouTubers, Robert Hutton, I think comes to mind, does a very good in-depth analysis and tutorial on how this guy works, but I'm just kind of going like the practical, like nuts and bolts, this is how you get a good image out of it. I usually bring up the bottom side here because this is your noise, your noise floor, and just bring this up a little bit, and I'll take a little bit of that, that chroma noise out of there, that luma noise, excuse me. And then I bring up this end of it to bring in more detail. Um, and just kind of fiddle with it till it looks good. You know, that's the thing. There's no, you know, this is your image. There's no right or wrong way. But, you know, I kind of like that. You get a little bit of the detail down here in the fine edge. And, you know, get a little bit of pop in the course, too. And you're really starting to see this crater right here is really starting to pop. Keep an eye on that histogram. We aren't clipping yet. It still looks pretty good. Um, and then the chroma, this is your color, so I'm going to bring in some of that fine detail color right in there. And, you know, in these parts and pieces here, you see that little little bit of color in the Maria and the seas here, you know. Uh, the Apollo landing site, uh, 11 was like right in here, I want to say. I don't remember. I'm an astronomer, but <laughs> I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, it really starts to uh, pop out there. We'll bring in some of that coarse color, too. And uh, yeah, yeah, the moon really does have color to it, although that is a bit red. 
Um, when I shot this, we had a little bit of a forest fire nearby, so there was some smoke in the atmosphere, so that reddened things a bit. I'm going to correct that with white balance here in a minute. But that's, you know, you see how much better that looks? If we go down here and look at the crop from when we first started to where we did there, I mean, we've literally been working 10 minutes in Lightroom. I mean, in the dark room and dark table here. Uh, force of habit. I don't really use Lightroom anymore. Um, but now, since this is reddened a little bit, I'm going to back off the color temperature. I'm making an artistic decision here, so I'm going to back this off. Whoa, too much, too much. Went too high. That's orange. Let's see, 4300. It's a little much. I'm just going to go, I'm just using my mouse wheel here to scroll. Go up and bring it up. Yeah, that's a little better. It's a little less orange. Um, uh, yeah, maybe add just a hair more. There, there we go. Um, that looks pretty good. And I'm also going to let the exposure come up a little bit more. I'm watching my histogram just to make it a little brighter. But uh, yeah, there we go. Um, not bad at all. Not bad at all. So uh, you really, really got a lot of options here. Um, let me bring up that color saturation a little bit more. See what we get out of that. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So in a few simple clicks with a few simple modules. In fact, if we go here and look at all the ones on, the main ones we used was the equalizer, uh, the color correction, and um, uh, the chromatic aberration stuff. Really all we used, nothing complicated, nothing crazy, no masking really to speak of or going in and painting in masks or anything, which you can do. You're getting a little bit of some funkiness here around the edges, so you might want to back off uh, uh, if you start seeing that, I find backing this off a little helps kind of take the edge off of that. Um, but no one's going to look at this this far, this close in. Tone mapping, that, that seems to be a result of the tone mapping module, so I might actually back that up a little bit too. Um, back up the contrast compression. Yeah, that, that, that deals with that little bit of edging there. Um, eh, maybe not that much. We'll go in a little and... Maybe bring this up. Maybe fiddle with it just to get that final look that we want. Ooh, too much. Not not enough uh, detail on that. So we'll bring that in. Okay. And this was taken with a five-year-old camera with me hand-holding a lens. So um, anyway. But that's pretty close to this final result that I got here on this image. Uh, maybe not quite as good. Uh, let me bring up that white balance a little bit and see what we get there. Whoa, too much. Too much. Too much. That's a little better. Uh, let me see here. Tone curve, maybe, maybe bring that down a little bit and let some of that. There we go. Bring in this highlights a little. I think that was the problem why it looked washed out. All right. Yeah, that looks a little better. I'll bring this down a little bit more. There we go. That looks pretty sweet. Um, again, you can come in here and, and fiddle with the color a little bit more. I may. May just add a little bit of a splash in there, more color with the equalizer. There, I think that looks pretty good. Um, yeah, so yeah, uh, bring in the more coarse. Let's see what we get on the more coarse side. And just bring this way up there. Yeah, that looks pretty darn good. So now you've got a moon photo that has texture and color and detail to it. Um, you know, again, we spent less than 15 minutes here and we went from this to this. Um, fantastic. You put, you can now share that out, um, to wherever, ooh, my wrist just popped. Sorry about that. Um, you can now share that out on Flickr or Instagram or Facebook or whatever and get those fake internet points that are so important. Um, but, uh, yeah. Uh, that is the process I use to process my, uh, to, uh, process and, uh, add some, add some detail to my moon photos. Um, you can use this on, you know, any phase of the moon, any look of the moon, and you'll end up with some really good looking stuff. If you get an even tighter lens, like a 500 millimeter or like a, a telescope or something, you'll get even more detail. Uh, but this is not bad at all. Um really really quite impressive what you can do in the digital darkroom these days with uh, even a free open source program so i encourage you to go download dark table and give this a try and uh, let me know if you found this video helpful and uh, i will see you in the next go around